us what it was like last night. Oh, look, last night in Lilydale we had well over an inch of rain, 25 millimetres of rain in the space of one hour. I really thought the cardboard would collapse, but the plastic held up. It was freezing cold, and um, as I lay in the boxes I've done now for 98 nights over the last six years, almost a total of 700 hours, I think one thing only, and that is that the understanding is that people do this every single night of the year. Every people, every homeless person has to make a decision as to where they're going to be. Gentlemen, um, I'd like to welcome you all here today to the launch of a Homeless Week here in um, the Yarra Ranges, the Yarra Ranges Winter Sleepout that uh, has annually been done now for the last six years. It's important to understand that Homeless Week is something that only takes part in, in one week of the whole year, but certainly the plight of homeless people is there 365 days a year. Holy Fools and I believe that we need to um, highlight the plight of homeless people every chance we get, and hence the reason why we have a launch here to, to put through Homeless Week. I believe that um, as a community, we need to do more. I know that we are trying to do more. I know that we are trying as a community to understand where the need is. And in the Australian society these days, things are changing at every single jump. And unfortunately, it's very difficult for all levels of government to keep up with the needs of Australians. What we can do at a community level, and David Suzuki, in those immortal words many years ago, said, you can think global, but act local. And that's what we're here today. Really be angry about it, and it's step, you know, as it says, step up for homelessness. And every one of you, when you it's extended family, your extended work, but sort of, do you know it's homeless week? If they say no, and well, tell them about it, what you've been hearing today and that sort of stuff. Because it's outrageous in this so-called lucky country that we've got people who can't find a, a bed at night. You know, I remember at one stage the local the government said, um, Victoria, the place to be. Well, it is if you've got a place to be. But, you know, as I said, when you've got all these kids getting churned out of the school system and all that, we've got to start fixing the leak in the boat or we're all going to drown. And now I want to... <laughs> Congratulate Tim on sleeping out. <laughs> Haven't picked the best of weather. It's just absolutely bloody freezing. And uh, <clears throat> I didn't get out of bed this morning. I thought, oh, no, do I have to get out of bed? But, um, you know, he's doing his bit. Let us do our bit. Thank you. <clears throat> our next speaker is the CEO of Anchor Community Care. Um, Heidi Tucker uh, is going to come and give us a, a little bit of a rendition of something that Anchor decided to do last year that no one else has done in this format, and that is understand, and I've got the question written on the concrete down in the right-hand corner, how do you deal with a homeless person? Well, we don't know how to deal with a homeless person until we find out where are they, who are they, how old they are, why do they become homeless, because you don't just step from step one to step two and become homeless. There's about six or seven steps before you end up being a homeless person. I congratulate Anchor in the work they've done together with Swinburne University, I think, Heidi? Yeah, and Heidi's gonna give us a little bit of an understanding of where we think we are in relation to youth being homeless. And, and Anchor's the first organisation to do this in Yarra Rangers. Thank you, Heidi. Um, we particularly wanted to look at that group of young people, I suppose, who were trying, as, as Les said, trying to keep their school going. And what we know is that kids kids sort of don't, often don't tell anybody at school what's going on because they're quite ashamed of, of where their situation is. So it might be that their whole family is homeless and they've been split up and needing to stay at different people's place. Or it could be that a young person has just decided enough's enough of the family violence at home or abuse that they've been experiencing and then they just find that they just got to get out of it. So what we identified was a, a, a group of young people who as I say, we're not disclosing that they didn't really have anywhere to live because they didn't really think they were homeless. Often what they were doing was um, sleeping on other people's couches or sleeping in other people's spare rooms. Um, but of course that leads to a lot of instability and, and if kids do that for long enough, they find that they just move and move and move and, and then their schooling can be disrupted. And what we know is that once kids' schooling is disrupted, 
they will often not pick it back up again because it's just too hard to go back and, and, and do it all again. So I guess that we identified that where the key connection was was through schools. And sorry, it's a bit hard to <laughs> it's hailing. <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day it was hailing and I'm trying to talk. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess that what we've identified is that um, schools are our major partner. So often what will happen in schools is that a young person will come along to school and um, schools will say to us, well, you know, I don't really know where they're living, but they're coming to school every day, so what's the problem? And we say, well, the problem is, is that their, their housing and, and their lives are so insecure that at any moment they could just drop out of school. So we've been trying to engage schools in doing some joint work, um, identifying kids that are, are at risk, that are perhaps finding it difficult at home, and we're starting with them young. So we, we recognise that kids of about 12, 13, 14 is when they first start to leave home and to go and stay at other people's houses. So if we can try and intervene then, um, we might get them off the cycle of ha um, being homeless, which we know leads to criminality, leads to drug and alcohol abuse, etc. So starting at the beginning. So. Um, I'm very proud of the piece of um, research that we've done. It's actually um, a lot of um, entities have picked up on it and, um, you know, and are sort of ringing us and saying, hey, you know, we like your piece of research. We'd like to do in another area of Melbourne. You know, we're very interested in what you've done. So it's, it's getting quite a lot of airplay. So we're pretty proud of it. Our next speaker is a young lady who is connected just recently with um, Holy Falls and certainly a young lady who's had a little bit of understanding um, on what it's like to be homeless, having been homeless for between five and six years, even her, at her age. Laura Johns is a young lady now who has now wanted to help others at a, a local level in the city of Maroondah and certainly at a local level with um, Holy Falls. I know that she would want to give a, a little bit of an insight as to how things had been so certainly I won't uh, steal any more thunder from her. Laura Johns, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Really, it's, it's quite difficult for a young person to be homeless especially, and I'm not saying it's not difficult for everyone else, but as um, Les and Fiona were saying, it's, it's extremely hard because young people don't like to talk about it. They are very, feel very, very ashamed of their um, situation. And it, sometimes it can be quite difficult to speak out, especially when you don't know if someone's going to be open to what you're saying. And I, having these experiences and opportunities to share my story, I think it, I've had a lot of young people open up to me because it's it sort of given them the opportunity to see that you know a young person has stepped up. And by all means, every single time I've stepped up to to speak in front of people, it is the hardest thing I've ever done. Uh, it is harder than sleeping out in this weather. Uh, just talking about things, I'm still surprised that I'm not crying. But, um, thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd just like to say that thank you all for coming. That um, We've had, as Holy Fools, we've had an amazing year with uh, ups and downs as well, but um, we, uh, Back in March, we had a, a major robbery in our offices, and that the van was stolen, and then about a, a bunch of gear was stolen. But that's not what I want to focus on. I want to focus on a bit of what Laura said and what Les has said is that it, the community response to that has been fabulous. The community has sort of rallied around that and said, "Well, what can we do to help?" So we've had inundated been with clothing, um, we've been inundated with with food, uh, we've been inundated with donations. Um, it's just been fantastic. It's taken the community to, to come back and say, what can we do to help you guys help the people who, are, who you guys are helping? So I really think that the next step, and I really believe that it's stepping on what Les is saying and Laura and everyone else, is that it is the community that, as, as the community together with the agencies, with the government, that is going to have to make a difference here in the Arrow Ranges. I believe that it's going to take all levels of government um, and, and the community as a whole to realise that it is up to them to make a difference. Um, there's, you know, and that's not saying that everyone has to be involved in, in uh, working on the street or everyone has to be involved in, 
in donating or everyone has to be involved in 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 uh, being on on in, in an agency or anything like that but there's little things people can do one of the biggest things is education and that's what homeless prevention week is basically supposed to be is about educating people what uh, what the issues are now you know here we're standing under this 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 amazing um building that's been here for probably i don't know about 100 years but there are people who who sleep in here year round there are people who um we've come down here and found swags and talked to people who have been sleeping under here in weather like this without any sort of uh uh you know event happening there are people who uh who you know not 10 yards away 10, 10 meters away from here have been sleeping rough as well so the reality is is that there are people who in our community are still battling the elements in their in their with with their lives you know they're they're battling the temperatures they're battling the weather they're battling trying to st trying to sleep and trying to do what they can now laura touched on one thing that we are trying to do is to set up a drop-in center now we had one when i worked for the salvation army that was that was going fabulous we had a hundred square meters place that we were connecting with many people who were homeless many people who were just uh, lonely and just wanted somewhere to connect unfortunately that, that closed down but in holy fool's state we believe that that, that there is a desperate need for somewhere like that over this side of the, the ranges. There is nowhere really in Lilydale that people can go to, to access um, uh, safe space to, just to relax, to get out of the elements, to have a shower, to do the laundry, to um, you know, maybe even leave their gear while they need to go off for an appointment or something like that. So that's what we're, we're proposing, is that uh, we would like to see a drop-in centre uh, set up somewhere in, in Lilydale. And, uh, you know, we, we're calling on the community to see whether they can either donate money or, hey, I'd love to see someone donate a building or something like that. It would even be better. But I guess the, the next stage that we really want to say is, is that we believe that, that the next stage is that we need crisis accommodation. There is a desperate need for crisis accommodation in the Yarra Ranges. And uh, Holy Fools and a number of the other organisations, uh, the Housing Action Group and all that, um, are really pushing and saying that, that we need to step up and, and, and work together to see about getting some, some crisis accommodation for youth, some crisis accommodation for families, and some crisis accommodation for, for, just for men in general, to uh, stop the fact that people are sleeping on the streets and provide somewhere warm and, 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 uh, and in a safe environment for them. Just a couple of notes to say that during the week, this week, there are going to be a, a number of events taking place just down here. We're going to be doing a um, a fireside, fireside chat. It'll either be a fireside chat or a gas heater chat, uh, <laughs> depending on the weather. Um, where we'll be talking about one night every night an issue about homelessness and including youth and uh, through to uh, indigenous homelessness and, and things like that. So I invite you to come down there. Five, um, five o'clock, isn't it? Yeah. Um, there's uh, next Saturday night. We're inviting the public to come down here and sleep out with Tim. And uh, you know, come for a small donation, and you can you can camp out and enjoy the elements. Uh, we're hoping it's better weather. Yeah, and then on Saturday next week, next Saturday too, that we're hoping to do a couple of walking tours during the day. To um, I just we want to just highlight that within the Lilydale city bounds here, that there are a number of places that people have slept rough. And people probably just walk by them every day and don't realise that that's a spot that, that has been slept in rough. Uh, someone has slept in and, and used that place to, to survive. So, yeah, there's a few activities and we just encourage you to, uh, to maybe take part of that. The, um, there are stacks of our other activities taking place around Australia too through Homeless Prevention, Homelessness Prevention Week. And um, so we applaud all the other, other organisations and, and uh, agencies who are doing those sort of things. But let's not forget that, that what we're talking about are people human beings like you and I who are, who are the ones that, we are, that are the issues here, not numbers or statistics. Thank you. Thanks.